Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Fit Expo Live. Uh, and right now I have with me my very dear friend, Lisa Drexman. She is the founder of Fit for Mom. And if you've ever done a stroller strides class, this lady right here is the one that created that along with so many other formats. And she's an author, she is an accomplished entrepreneur and a prominent voice in health and wellness today, especially for the ladies out there that are just trying to find balance between motherhood and everything else in their lives. So a big round of virtual applause for my buddy, Lisa. Oh, so good to be here with you, Maria. So good to have you. And I think today's topic really um, is one that I think we all need to kind of get a hold of because when things get stressful and Dr. Rachel, who was just on before you was talking about stress, mm -hmm. when things get stressful, we tend to take the oxygen mask off of ourselves yeah. and freak out and panic. And so sure. everybody around, around us freaks out and panics too. Yeah. How do we avoid that? Yeah, I mean, I think we all hear that saying that you're supposed to put the oxygen mask on and we know that we're supposed to, but we don't know how. And so it's a matter of figuring out, okay, these are the steps that we are committed to taking and they can be really small, but these are the small things that we are committed to doing. And we always think success should happen in a quantum leap. And sometimes it's just small steps that are gonna take us in the right direction. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'd love for you to share a little bit about your story of how you started Fit for Mom in the first place, because it was really about a need that you had of your own. Yeah. So I started uh, Fit for Mom, but it was originally Stroller Strides 19 years ago. I wasn't looking to start a business. I was really looking to start a community. I was a fitness professional and I knew nothing about motherhood. So I was out there on a stroller walk with my son and I was having a great time working out with my baby, doing some stroller lunges. And I just had so many questions about motherhood. So I figured, hey, I'm gonna start a little local workout where I can ask all the questions that I have about motherhood, about sleeping and nursing, and I can help them get back in shape. And apparently I was not the only one looking for that because very long story short, it turned into a business. It ended up turning into stroller strides. Um, so again, um, I think that all moms are looking for community, even if they aren't looking necessarily for the fitness component. And it very much is tied into the um, oxygen mask um, I think that that is a very big component of our Fit for Mom classes is we teach you how to put the oxygen mask on first. Yeah. And Fit for Mom is no joke. I mean, I have attended your classes. I've seen them being done. I know franchisees that are like, it's the best workout I've ever done. Can you talk a little bit about the workouts? Because it's not just one. Yeah, so Stroller Strides was the original workout. So it's a stroller-based workout where you do get a total body workout. So you do uh, squats and lunges. You use the outdoor environment. We use exercise bands. But um, you do not have to be fit to join our classes. We really can have all different levels of moms who, to join us. And then we have all different other programs, too. We have Fit for Baby, which is a prenatal program. We have Body Boost, which is a high-intensity interval program. We have Body Well, which is a transformational program, which also includes coaching and um, meditation. And it's just a really beautiful program. And you don't need to bring your kids to that one. Mm -hmm. um, we have Strides 360, which is... Uh, cardio uh, program. We have uh, Body Ignite, which is strength program. I'm having trouble remembering them all because we have, have a lot. Yeah, I mean, we have programs for every age and stage of motherhood now um, because, you know, motherhood is, you know, not just a short time of your life. And I, what I really love too, aside from your kick butt workouts, um, is the community that you've built. And I think for every mom out there at every stage, I don't care if you have a, a newborn or if you have teenagers or adults that are out of the house, we need each other. Um, and plugging into a community, especially nowadays, I think is so, so valuable. Can you talk a little bit about that community that you've built? It's the defining aspect of Fit for Mom that I really didn't expect to happen. 
Um, Fit for Mom has never been just about sets and reps. Yes, you can get an incredible shape, but the community that happens in every location across the country is so incredible. Um, like I said, moms are looking for community. It doesn't matter if you are pregnant. It doesn't matter if you're a mom to a toddler, if you're a mom to a teenager, every mom is looking to connect to other moms. And so we really do our best to create very welcoming um, environments. And we do a lot to build those communities. So it doesn't happen by accident. So I promise you, if you join a Fit for Mom community, it is a place that you will feel purposefully welcome. Yeah, and the easiest way to get plugged into a community? Come to fitformom.com and it's fit with the number four. And I've got it right on the screen. So oh, all you got to do is click right there on the comments and it'll take you there. Um, I know, Lisa, you and I go way back and mm -hmm. I've seen what you've built and it's just so phenomenal. And I've gone to several of your um, your big events, your annual meetings uh, with your franchisees. And I think what I see there is just a hardcore desire to be better uh, is how I would describe it. You know, um, these women are empowered and you just happen to write the book about empowered motherhood. Can you show your book? Oh, yeah. Uh, just happen to have it. Thank the you. Empowered Mama, which yeah. is a phenomenal read. And I think every mother should feel empowered and should not feel like she's trying to uh, just survive because there's been a whole lot of other moms that have come before us. So let's yeah. use their wisdom. Um, but I think, you know, we, we may have the best of intentions, but how do we keep going? Cause man, is it tough right now, girl? I got three, three teenage boys at home. <laughs> that are not in school. And I feel like some days we got a dog, we got a business, we've got actually two businesses mm -hmm. in this household. And uh, that's not even the business of parenthood. So how do you keep it all together? Um, I think it is taking care of yourself first. And um, I think that we need to lessen the learning curve for each other by sharing what works and sharing what doesn't work. So there needs to be a real honesty with each other of that we're struggling, like not just a curated honesty on social media. You know what I mean? That yeah. I think that that's what we say. I know. I'm so glad you said that because I feel like there's a lot of honesty, but I'm kind of like, where is this going? Yeah, it's, like, it's messy. It's curated. <laughs> yeah. It's curated messiness. It's yeah. not authentic. Yeah. Like authentic honesty of like, I'm really struggling. And here's how I deal with that struggle. So, yeah. um, you know, I've tried to be really honest with in my own social media of the funks that I've been in dealing with COVID. And here's how I'm dealing with the funks. And here's how I'm dealing with those moods. And here's how I'm dealing with the challenges. Um, this for sure has been the hardest time in the history of my leadership with this business. Um, and I'm also looking at it as an incredible gift um, I think I have become a better leader in the history of this sure. business I bet. In, in this short time um, because of it. And so the more we can share what we've learned, what's working, what we figured out, but it is always going to come back to that oxygen mask. It is always going to come back to figuring out a few small things that are you have to do for yourself and it's going to be different for everybody. For me, it's I have to meditate every day. I mm. have to move my body every single day. I have to get into nature every day even if it's just for, you know, a few minutes with a walk with the dog. Like for you it might be prayer, it might be something completely different, it might be playing a game, all right? It might be words with friends. Like no mm -hmm. judgment. <laughs> like yeah. what yeah. is it for you that's going to be grounding for you? But if it's just giving to everybody else, um, you're going to wind up empty. And so we have to figure out what does the oxygen mask look like for you? And it might not be perfect, but you got to put it on a little. You got to take a couple of hits every day. Yeah, I, I want to talk about this daily routine that we create for ourselves, because I think COVID has either, um, you know, it's it's. <laughs> 
it takes a little more discipline, right? Mm -hmm. To have a daily routine. Maybe your daily routine was going into an office or into your yeah. work every day and you don't have that. So everything else kind of gets snowballed. How do you create that routine that you stick to? Yeah. I mean, I've always been a really structured person. Like I needed that routine before COVID and definitely felt with COVID that that, that slipped. And then I also noticed that my mood slipped. Mm -hmm. So I had to figure out, okay, what's the basic structure that I needed? And for me, it was getting back to my morning routine. And there is a morning ritual that's necessary for me to set the tone for my day. And so I think I always say, if you're not a sleep deprived mom, okay, <laughs> like sleep deprived mom, get, get a pass. But if you're yeah. not a sleep deprived mom, to get up an hour before the rest of your family and have an hour for yourself to set the tone for your day. Yeah. And again, what, what you do in that hour is up to you. Maybe it's yeah. just reading the paper, prayer, journaling, meditation, taking a walk, exercise, combination of any of those. Could be knitting. I don't really care. But to set the energy for your day is is pretty great. Yeah, I um, I have kind of observed this for a long time, and I think it did start when I had an infant in the house. Because if I didn't get up early, there was no way I was getting oh, much yeah. of anything done. Oh, no. uh, because your schedule revolves around them, and that is what it is. Um, but being able to take little pockets out of the day. And I think, you know, maybe you can talk about how you can do that because I think sometimes people think, well, having time for yourself means like scheduling a spa day or, you know, having two hours outside of the house to go do whatever you want to do. But that's not a reality for a lot of us. So how do you grab those precious moments that you can hold on to and really maximize them? Yeah. I mean, I don't think that, um, having something that makes you feel recharged and healthy and energy is selfish. And uh, for very few of us, is it going to the spa for very few of, you know, like go, go get it. If that's what you're doing. Like I find it more stressful sometimes. <laughs> like, I love going to the spa. Yeah. I miss going to the spa, but that's yeah. not part of like daily self care yeah. for me. Um, I always say your big aha, your big idea is never going to happen when you're busy. Like you have a limited amount of brain space. And so you cannot keep burning, burning, burning that brain energy. You have to use it wisely. And so you've got to work in. I'm very big on working on time blocks. And so you've got to work in blocks and then take a break. And so what are you going to do for that break? Are you going to go take a walk? Are you going to go get a snack? Go get some fresh air. But like we live... But well, pre-COVID, we lived in this time of busy, busy, busy. Yeah. And I actually think that has been a gift of COVID is it's given us a chance to take a breath and slow down. Yeah. And I'm really hoping that if there is a new normal, that maybe we don't go back to being quite so busy. Maybe we realize that we don't have to go back to such a fast life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, busyness is uh, the, the anti-creative uh, thing that happens to us. So it's hard to get any sort of perspective. While we're sitting here, I am uh, maximizing my time. I'm doing like little mini Kegels. You ever do that? <laughs> I know I can say that to you. Okay. Um, so, so here's the thing. Do you schedule this? Like I am crazy about this phone mm -hmm. and it's not just something to take pictures with. Uh, <laughs> that's supposed to be a joke because your yeah. phone is supposed to be something you may right. call with. Um, but I use it to schedule everything. I scheduled taking my supplements. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. remember, take your supplements. Yeah. Uh, remember, go do this. Like, do you use your phone as a reminder? Yeah. So I have an entire um, schedule blocked out called my ideal week. And so I block out my schedule, like much like people, much like you create a budget for money, I have my time budgeted out. 
Ah. So I will create an ideal week of this is when I work out. This is when I have a date with my husband. This is when I do email. And so just like my, my money budget, it doesn't work exactly like that, but this is an ideal week. And then I block my appointments around that. So it's an ideal. Um, you and I both do podcasts. So this is a good example. The brain that it takes to do podcasts is very different than the brain that it takes to do meeting time. So I have different days that I do podcasts versus the days I do meetings. Yeah. So I block different times based on the type of work that I'm doing. And so all of that is preset for me. Mm -hmm. um, now, that might sound way too regimented for some people. So you're not so locked in that you can't break the rules. But at least there's a guideline. And for me, it feels good to know that there's a place for it. And that like at this time, hey, it's time to wrap up and be done. And if you're working from home and most of us are working from home because of COVID, it feels good to know, hey, you know what? At five o'clock, four o'clock, whatever it is for you, it's time to wrap up and call it quits and be home and be home with your family. Yeah. Yeah. Without multitasking your family. I think probably one of the most heartbreaking moments I ever had um, being a single mom trying to build a business and stuff and be there for my kids is one day I was working and my son was like, are you ever going to stop working? And I was just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. like that, that thing in my throat that was just like, man, I, I can't, I got to figure out how to do this so that I'm not always on where they I can go. If you remember, but that's very much why I wrote the book, because yeah. in the first handful of years of running the business, I started the business because I wanted to be a mom first and foremost. But the business took off. And here I am running this national business that was crazy and so busy. And I wasn't showing up as the mom I wanted to be and the person I wanted to be. And I knew something needed to change. So yeah. I completely redesigned my life. And I re-architected it in a way that I'm like, I, I'm one of the few people I know that like, I love my life and I feel like I have a work-life win. I, I never say balance, but I have a work-life win. And I felt like other people didn't get that. So that was why I wrote Empowered Mama was because I wanted to share what I had figured out with other people so that other people could have that work-life win. How to reclaim your time and reclaim your health and reclaim yourself. Yeah. Uh, we have Chica is commenting, saying, I felt that same heartbreak with my uh, with my sons. And I think that's something that as um, as parents, I'm going to say parents, we feel a lot of guilt around. Mm -hmm. How how do we how do we incorporate, um, you know, our time together? How do we how do we make that more powerful? Because I think, you know, being present for them is about feeling like you are confident and satisfied and doing what you need to do first. How do we then say, okay, now I'm ready for you? I think it's, um, we have to be better at honoring our word to ourselves and our family. And so for me, that looked like when I was with my work to truly be with my work. And when I was with my kids to truly be with my kids and to tell my kids that when I was working, that I hope that they one day find work that they love so much um, and that excited them so much. And that they, um, I hope that one day they find work that they love so much that it, it broke their heart to not be with their kids because they would want to be with their work so much. Um, and at the same time, when you're with your kids to turn that darn phone off and, and to honor that time. Yeah. Um, and that's hard to do, but honor your agreements with yourself. Yeah. I love that. Um, in your, in your journey, was there ever a time where you were just like, I don't know how I'm going to do all this. Like I, I have, I gotten in so deep that I don't even know, like, uh, because I have, I've Are you joking? Are you joking? In my career where I'm just like, I just don't want to like work anymore. 
Maria, you are joking because you know that that has happened. Oh, like, I know, but I want you to answer for everybody else's benefit. Like, like, he like all the time, all the time. Uh, no, I shouldn't say all the time because if it was all the time, then we wouldn't be working. Um, so most of my franchisees know a story that anytime I wanted to throw in the towel, which did happen, um, Jason would always, Jason is my husband, Maria knows, but the rest of you don't know. Uh, he would always say, okay, babe, you can throw in the towel when you have gotten through whatever you are going through. And if you still want to throw in the towel, then you can't. Hmm. And whenever I would get through whatever that is, I'm like, oh, no, now I don't want to throw in the towel. I love my business. He knows you so well. Huh? Yeah. And, and that is, I mean, really couldn't even be more true right now. Like, um, right now is the hardest time in the history of my business, without a doubt. Um, with everything we're going through at Fit for Mom, it's the hardest time. And I've never loved my business more. Hmm. I never love my business more. I am so proud of my franchisees and so proud of what we do. And so hard, well, is, is hard doesn't have to mean bad. Yeah, that's for sure. Hard is the refining process. It's, it's the, you know, letting go of the stuff that you realize that doesn't really serve you that much. Um, and I think everybody's idea of success is so different, right? Like you and I might look at something and go, well, my idea of success is just being able to carve out, you know, this time every week to to do what I want to do or to feel financial independence or to go to my kids, you know, sports when they have them. Um, but other people's ideas of success may be, you know, I wanted this and I wanted that and I wanted this and I wanted that and I, you know, if you don't have that, you feel less than accomplished. Has there ever been a moment where you're like, you know, I need to maybe like reframe what I term as success? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, many times, many times and really realize that um, we have sufficiency, you know, we have, we have enough. Mm -hmm. Um we have enough and we're okay. We have what we need. Um, for a long time now, you know, we've been driven more by impact than we have by financial dollars. Mm. Um, and maybe that could hold us back. You know, maybe we could be killing it financially more. I don't know. Um, but uh, because we've been really more just about the impact and, yeah. Feel like we're more a cause than a company yeah yeah um i i think that having a balance in you know just your perspective and i think your perspective changes as you evolve as a mom as just a citizen of humanity um i think your perspective and your focus changes as you grow and become wiser <laughs> i'm not gonna say get older uh but the truth is, I think I'm a much like nicer and better person than I was maybe 10 years ago because yeah. I'm so much more confident in me yeah. and, and like where I hold things sacred. Do you think that is just kind of like a product of getting older and wiser or do you think some people are just born with it? No, I think that is a product of it. You know, everybody's like so stressed on getting older, but it, I... <laughs> Everybody I meet that's getting older is pretty darn happy with getting older. There's wisdom that comes along with it that yeah. we couldn't get. And so while we, maybe we would trade uh, for a younger body or something, I don't think you would trade for the wisdom that you have. And yeah. uh, the fact is we have great depth of gratitude and um I don't know. I'm I'm so right now in a place of of gratitude for everything that we have. Um, so I said I have sufficiency. Yeah, 
Somebody, uh, Angela Davies said something uh, and I want to read it to you. She said, you never loved your business more because you know without a shadow of a doubt how much Fit for Mom means to its franchisees. Oh. And the moms they serve. Your brand is a lifeline to this group and they need you. That's, oh, that's awesome. pretty powerful stuff. Amazing. So I, I'm going to put you on the spot for a second. Uh -oh. You're my friend and I can do that to you. Yeah. Can you show us a few moves? <laughs> um, I want some new moves for my work. I am so not dressed for that. I love you. Yeah. I mean, you don't even have to get up. Just yeah. maybe walk us through like just a few efficient <laughs> moves that we can do to mix up our exercise workout a little bit if we are working out at okay. home. Um. I'm going to actually do something that's more breathing exercise for you okay. uh, because you mentioned Kegel. All right. So um, I'm sorry to all the guys who are, you can still, you can still play along, <laughs> still play along guys. But um, right now I just want you to connect with your breath. So I want you to just connect with your inhale and your exhale to start with. And as you exhale, I want you to draw your pelvic floor up. And as you inhale, I want you to let that pelvic floor relax. You can think of your pelvic floor almost like a jellyfish. So <laughs> when you inhale, it's like a flat jellyfish. And when you exhale, it pulls up. Can you picture that? You know what I'm talking about? When that jellyfish oh, yeah. pulls through the air, you yeah. have that visualization. Like a little octopus, right? Yes, like when that octopus pulls up through the air, all right? So connect your breath to that pelvic floor movement. Should I close my eyes? I've yeah, been for me, it's very hard to do without closing my eyes, yeah. but you, you, you are welcome. And at the same time, we are now also going to connect our transverse abdominis. So I want you, and, and for me, it also helps to put my hands on my rib cage. So as you exhale, feel your rib cage expand. And then you inhale and it comes together. So when you exhale, draw everything in and together. So the pelvic floor comes up and the rib cage gets knit together. As you exhale, let the belly relax and the pelvic floor relax. Is everybody doing this? If you're not I breathing, you're all doing it. Really missing out. <laughs> Exhale, draw it in and together. Inhale and release. Yeah, one more time. Exhale. All right. So what I want you to think about the next time you work out is connecting that core and pelvic floor movement to your squat, to your mm. lunge, mm. to your plank. These are all connected. You can't. You mean you're supposed to breathe when you plank? <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Your core is connected to everything that you do and your breath is connected to everything that you do. And so we want to start at Fit for Mom. All of our exercise is connected here at your core and pelvic floor. So that's what I leave you with. I love that. I, <laughs> I feel better already and I needed that because it's been a day of wellness, but I've also been sitting a lot. So uh, I'm going to stand up for the next one, I think. So with that, I just want to thank you, Lisa, for being like just such an inspiration in my life. I remember when I first met you, I kind of like fangirled a little bit. Remember, we met like a long time ago, but you were checking out our Eat Cleaner products. And I'm like, 
my God, it's Lisa Truxman. Well, I still use Eat Cleaner like all the time. And um, what we didn't talk about was that you, I mean, I don't know if we're not supposed to, but you're on our advisory board. And Maria has created all of the recipes for our new Body Well program. And people are going nuts over these recipes. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. I made those, those peanut butter oatmeal chocolate chip cookies this morning, actually in our first session. And uh, they're breakfast cookies, so you can have them for breakfast. I love them. That's love so them, good. Love them, love them. Oh, that's so good. I'm so happy yeah. to hear that. Well connected. We're so excited to be working with you at Fit for And me. likewise, I couldn't, I couldn't be happier because I love the people that you're serving. You've built an incredible community. Um, I just want to thank you for always showing up for mamas and everybody that loves their mamas uh, and just staying empowered. So one more time, show your book, The Empowered Mama. Grab that on Amazon, on where? Where's the best? Go to Amazon. Amazon and also uh, fitformom.com. Yep. Follow Lisa and all of her amazing inspo. And for everybody tuning in, stick around. Don't go away. We've got two more fantastic presentations coming up. We're going into the kitchen with Chef Sally Cameron in just 15 minutes. So, don't leave where you are. Have an amazing day. Thanks for having me.